Promises to be a welcome respite from the extreme cold of the last three weeks. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we face what seems to be the fifth wave in this almost endless pandemic and need to revert once again to an entirely virtual format through which to draw strength and inspiration from this our beloved community. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sure that we've all shared appreciation for the remarkable skills of all those prevent, presenting this service this morning. They enable us to come together in a meaningful and spiritually rewarding manner, despite the absence of physical closeness. Through them and all others involved, we are still experiencing words of wisdom and compassion and are transported from deep emotion to toe-tapping happiness. It is undoubtedly a time to cherish the value of community and maintain our links to one another. Whoever you are, whoever you love, and wherever you are in uh, your journey of faith or search for meaning, you're truly welcome. If you're connecting for the first time or for the first time in a long time, know that we are grateful to have you with us. We come together in beloved community to grow in wisdom, welcome and deepen relationships and act for a just and sustainable world. My name is Alex Schumacher and I have the privilege of serving on your board of trustees. I am a committed Unitarian, believing that we come together for our own betterment and for that of the community at large. <clears throat> Wherever you are now, let us together remember and acknowledge those on whose traditional territories we currently reside. <clears throat> in doing so, here in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta, we must recognize that this is the traditional territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy. To all of whom, and in a spirit of reconciliation, we have a responsibility to be respectful and act as good stewards of this land. The Blackfoot Confederacy includes the people of the Sigsiga, Pigune, Gaina, Sutina, and Nakoda First Nation which is also known as the Stony, and includes the Bearspaw, Chiniki, and Wesley Bands. Treaty 7 <clears throat> was signed in September the 27th, 1877, and was entered into as a collaboration between settlers and indigenous people, making us all treaty people. The city of Calgary, known in the Blackfoot tongue as Bokinstis, is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. I now invite Reverend Shelley to light our chalice. Our chalice lighting words this morning are from Frederick Gillis. May the love which overcomes all differences, which heals all wounds, which puts flight to all fears, which reconciles all who are separated, be in us and among us today and always. Let us worship together. Well, good morning. I'm the Reverend Shelley Thompson. My pronouns are she and her, and I am so delighted to be the interim minister here at Calgary Unitarians and delighted to be with all of you this morning. Our worship and listening circle theme for this month is living with intention. And I realize with this latest round of COVID that we have to be more intentional than ever about how we connect to one another. We really need to intentionally reach out, make that effort to be together 
on Zoom or in whatever way possible so that we maintain the loving bonds of support and care that are getting us all through this pandemic. So in our intentional faith community, we talk about connections as all of the ways we relate to one another through worship, through all of our service on our mission, through choir, Vespers, DRE Sheila's Young at Heart program, and so many more. Amazingly adaptable creatures that we are, we have learned to do this on Zoom. And I hope that soon we'll have the option for those of you for whom it's safe to rejoin us in the sanctuary for worship. But especially now, I'd like us to all support one another through these connections and through reaching out to one another. Like a phone call or a text with a little heart and smiley emoji. You might even write someone a letter, one of your friends that you haven't crossed paths with on Zoom lately. I heard that the caring calls that went out last year were really appreciated. And that's the kind of thing that we need more of these days. And if you feel like you need a little extra TLC, you can reach out to me or the caring team or jump on Zoom on Tuesdays to sing with the coffee choir. Singing together can be such an uplifting way to connect and remember that you're never alone. During the last part of January, our Committee on Shared Ministry will be leading another intentional connections phone call campaign. I and some of the other ministry teams will join them in making phone calls to each and every one of you, everyone on our friends and members list, because we genuinely want to connect with you, to check in, to find out how you're doing, and to hear about the ways that you're being creative and adaptive and intentional about connecting with us and the rest of your friends and family. And I'm really looking forward to that, and I hope that you too will be enjoying catching up with Calgary Unitarians. And now our marvelous music maven, Jane Perry, will lead us in the opening hymn. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be together again in this virtual space with you. I'm Jane Perry. I'm the music director at Calgary Unitarians, and my pronouns are she and her. Thank you for making the decision to be here online with all of us this morning and bringing your big, great big hearts with you as well. I see we have friends from Toronto and from Whitefish, Montana, and from Calgary and all around. So wherever you are this morning, thank you for joining us in this virtual space for service. Here we have gathered together. Let's sing about that. In 360, here we have gathered. Thank you. 
morning, everyone. It is so great to see all of you on this chilly morning. I'm Diary Sheila, and my pronouns are she and her. And today we're talking about intentional connection. And I think the hard part is how do we do that <laughs> right now? It's a little hard. And so one thing that we're doing this week is I'm hosting a stuffed animal sleepover party. That's right. So no people, just stuffed animals. Uh, your stuffed animal gets chauffeured service to and from your home. They're going to spend a whole week with me having a great time. We're going to take lots of pictures, have lots of stories to tell next Sunday. So that's going to be great. And if you want to get in on the action, just email me at dresheila at calgaryunitarians.ca before this Tuesday, and we'll invite your stuffed animal along. And I can tell you yesterday, I spent Saturday doing a little chauffeuring and some pickups, and we have nine stuffed animals from nine of our Unitarian children already participating. It's already a party at my house. I'm telling you, lots of fun going down this week. So we'll have that for you next Sunday, and that should be lots of fun. And for the youth, the CUC is actually hosting um, a series of youth get-togethers, mycelium, uh, the youth network gathering. It's connecting youth right across Canada. And the next one is going to be this uh, on Saturday, January 22nd, 12 to 2 p.m. It's for ages 12 to 19. It's free, it's online, and it's just a great way for all the youth to stay connected. And this week in my children and youth newsletter, I have three simple questions to help a child in your life or a youth feel more connected. And so an example is asking, how would you solve this problem? And the question I think empowers, honors, and celebrates their wisdom. And also it helps them feel like their opinion matters, which always helps you connect to anyone. Ask them their opinion. That's a good tip for this week. As Brene Brown says, connection is why we're here. It's what gives purpose and meaning to our lives. And I have to agree with that. So today's story is also all about connection. It's written by Indigenous author Monique Gray Smith and Métis illustrator Danielle Danielle Daniel. Um, it was written to get people talking about reconciliation, but also the importance of the connection children make with others. It's about building relationships, fostering empathy, and encouraging respect between peers, starting with our littlest citizens. And here we go. Our story is called, You Hold Me Up. You hold me up when you are kind to me, when you share with me, when you learn with me. You hold me up when you play with me, when you laugh with me, when you sing with me. You hold me up when you comfort me, when you listen to me, when you respect me. You hold me up, I hold you up. We hold each other up. And I love this story because I think it's a reminder of how we can connect with each other in just simple ways. Wherever our bodies are, our hearts can be in community. You hold me up, I hold you up, we hold each other up. I love that story. Thank you, Sheila. As a minister and a former therapist, intentional connection is really important to me. One of the ways I'm exploring the power of authentic relationships is by intentionally connecting to the First Nations elders and teachers who are in relationship with our congregation. Pam Rickey and Jocelyn Keith Asante have graciously included me in their Truth and Reconciliation team through the Calgary Alliance for the Common Good. We've been blessed to be participating in conversations with elders who want to help organizations like ours 
build the relationships of solidarity and friendship that form the basis for community organized social justice work. Of course, these experiences enrich us all and transform us as our perspectives are changed. We change together in ways that help us all build better relationships with each other and the world around us. Since arriving in Canada, I've heard the wise words of Ojibwe author Richard, Richard Wagamies on many times, and now I'm quoting from his book, Embers, too. It's eminently quotable and wonderful. He shares some of the conversations that he had with an elder, an old woman, who taught him important life lessons that really speak to me about intentional connection as a way of life. Richard asked, why am I alive? The old woman said, because everything else is. Richard, no, I mean the purpose. The old woman, that is the purpose, to learn about your relatives. Richard, my family? Old woman, yes, the moon, stars, rocks, trees, plants, water, insects, birds, mammals your whole family. Learn about that relationship, how you are moving through time and space together. That is why you are alive. Wagamis gives us more to ponder about this idea of relationship. From our very first breath, he said, we are in relationship. With that indrawn draft of air, we become joined with everything that ever was, is or will be. When we exhale, we forge that relationship by virtue of the act of living. Our breath commingles with all breath, and we are a part of everything. That's the simple fact of things. We are born into a state of relationship, and our ceremonies and rituals are guides to lead us deeper into that relationship with all things. Big lesson? Relationships never end, they just change. In believing that lies the freedom to carry compassion, empathy, love, kindness, and respect into and through whatever changes. We are made more by that practice. Amen to that. Foundational in many First Nations teachings is this shared ontological belief that everything in creation is related to everything else. The universe and everything in it is understood as all my relations. I was introduced to this idea the first time by a Lakota elder. In the Lakota language, this is metakwiasin. It is both a greeting and a prayer. When they meet, they say, aho metakwiasin. Hello, my relations. Hello, my relatives. We are all related. It's a prayer that honors the oneness of all that is. And it's a mutual affirmation of interconnectedness, therefore responsibility and respect. Unitarian Universalism expresses this belief learned from the First Nations as the interconnected web of all existence of which we are a part. You might be a UU if you use more words than most people. Aho, Matakwiasin, we are all related. There is a very strong faith inherent in this way of understanding the world, and Wagamese expressed it so well, it bears repeating. Relationships never end, they just change. In believing that lies the freedom to carry compassion, empathy, love, kindness and respect into and through whatever changes. We are made more by that practice. We've been talking a lot about this in our faith as we've explored our eighth principle too. It's what the eighth principle is really all about. To fully embody the wisdom of all our relations, we Unitarian Universalists have to practice living in accountable relationships in a good way, as our First Nations teachers tell us. 
in a good way means rooted in our values, with our integrity, true to what we say we believe, and for us as UUs, also dismantling the old harmful ways of being that separate us from one another and no longer serve us. As the old woman said, that is why you are alive. This truth is really being driven home to me by COVID, which is also keeping us apart and sharpening the iniquities in our society. I think most people are getting tired of the limitations COVID is placing on our ways of relating to one another. I went a full two years without ever getting a hug from anybody and oh, that was a long two years. It makes it all the more clear how essential relationships are to our well-being. Wagamese explained this well. He said, I've been considering the phrase, all my relations, for some time now. It's hugely important. It's our saving grace in the end. It points to the truth that we are related, that we are all connected, that we all belong to each other. The most important word is all, not just those who look like me, sing like me, dance like me, speak like me, pray like me, all my relations. That means every person, just as it means every rock, mineral, blade of grass and creature. We live because everything else lives. If we were to choose collectively to live that teaching, the energy of our change of consciousness could heal each of us and heal the planet. I recently had the opportunity to experience how this way of being is practiced when I participated in a drum making workshop with Chantal Chagnon, thanks to Jane Perry who introduced me to her. Chantal self-describes as a Cree, Métis, singer, drummer, artist, storyteller, actor, educator, workshop facilitator, social justice advocate and activist with roots in the Muskeg Lake Cree Nation, Saskatchewan. And she really is that remarkable and talented. The three-day workshop begins with Chantal sharing the teachings of the Cree Medicine Wheel, which is a way of understanding ourselves, our mental, physical, and emotional, and spiritual aspects of our lives throughout the seasons of the year, the seasons of our lives, across our lifespan. It teaches the medicines found through our relationships with plants, animals, the elements, and with the family of creation. Medicine wheel teachings vary somewhat from nation to na nation, and these are all considered equally good ways. Doing things in a good way means that it's practiced in harmony with all our relations. All throughout the workshop, we practice being in this kind of right relationship, starting with each person smudging with smoke from the four sacred medicines of the medicine wheel, sage, cedar, sweetgrass, and tobacco. We engaged in genuine deep sharing about what the healing teachings mean to each of us and how we plan to incorporate them and use them to serve others in our lives. Chantal blessed and honored everything we were using, the animal hides, all of the materials, every tool we used. She smudged them all. The drums themselves represent the teachings in many ways. Their primary purpose is to build community through drumming and singing together. So this is my drum I want to show you. And I made it out of buffalo hide. Chantal taught us to do this gesture to be in relationship with our drum. And this is the drumstick that I made to go with it. And buffalo hide is associated with 
the physical realm and the earth. And that's good for me. I need that grounding in my life. Chantal taught us the, that every nation has its own patterns and ways of lacing the hide onto the drum frame. And every pattern has a meaning. So I chose a Cree pattern. And you can see it has an awful lot of holes in it. Some of the patterns have less holes and less lacing. But this one shows a community circle. And then for the handle, I used a tree of life pattern. The tree of life symbols symbolizes that interconnectedness of all creation. And in using this pattern, I'm honoring not only the ancestors who have brought me this teaching that has been shared to me through Chantal, but also my own ancestors. I am half uh, Celtic, Scottish Irish, and the tree of life is a symbol for the Celtic tradition as well. And then of course it represents our seventh principle, our interconnected web of all creation. Because this drum is going to be used at Calgary Unitarians. It's gonna be used in worship and drum circles, I hope, and hopefully eventually out in the world in a justice choir, if we get the chance uh, when COVID lets up. And it will remain with Calgary Unitarians even when I'm gone, I'm going to let Jane Perry be the guardian of the drum. It's a, a common native teaching that when we learn some of this wisdom, when we are given this gift, we need to then give away the first item that we make in reciprocity and gratitude. So I made this one for you. And I'll give you a little sample of what it sounds like. I'm not very versed in it yet. I hope it will be a source of enjoyment and connection for many years to come. And it carries with it my prayer for Calgary Unitarians that we will continue to grow and build more connections and intentional relationships with the First Nations communities here in Calgary. My experience in such a short time has been that there is an incredible welcome, an open arm invitation a great deal of love and willingness to teach, to grow, to learn together, to help us all honor our interconnectedness, the fact that we are all related. And I give you some drum wisdom from Richard Wagamis. Richard, why do I use a drum, the old woman, to touch the earth? Richard, then why do I sing with it, old woman, to allow the earth to touch you? Richard, what am I singing for, old woman, so that someday you might sing the one note that joins your heartbeat and the earth's heartbeat to the heartbeat of everything? Richard, you're saying that drumming and singing, anything that leads me inward and then outward is just like praying and meditating. Old woman, you are getting wiser, my boy. And so am I, and so are all of you as we grow together in relationship, deepening our connections intentionally reminding ourselves to treat one another as all our relations. Amen. May it be so, Ashe, blessed be. For our time of meditation, reflection and prayer, I invite you to spend a moment in silence to consider what the quote from Wagamizi means in your life and the life of Calgary Unitarians. He said, I've been considering the phrase all my relations for some time now. It's hugely important. It's our saving grace in the end. It points to the truth that we are all related, that we are all connected, that we all belong to each other.
when we share our joys and concerns with one another. We light a candle for all of the joys, the celebrations, the moments of mystery and wonder, the miracles in our lives that bring us so much happiness and connection with others that we want to share them. We light a candle for the sorrows, the sadness and grief that we need to share to help us carry the burden. My father is recovering from knee replacement surgery this week. He's doing very well, but it continues to be a concern with me to uh, hope his healing process goes well. And we also double candle for all of the joys and concerns in the world. Again, to remember the essential workers that are still on the front lines dealing with COVID. And we've lost some important famous people lately. Bell Hooks, Betty White, Sidney Poitier. A lot of people are mourning their passing and they will always be remembered for the light they brought to the world. And now I will light our candles. Thank you. 
now to think about the offering for this week. And in addition to the needs of our community, we're thinking of the For Others Fund, which this month goes to the Awotan Healing Lodge Society, providing shelter and support for families experiencing domestic violence, guided by indigenous teachings. So if you're in the post-holiday giving zone and you've, you've spent a bit on gifts, maybe you can come up with just a little. There are 57 people here right now on this webinar. And if we all give just a little, maybe $10 more if you can manage, we'll come up with a significant amount to donate. So thank you for what you can give. We extinguish our chalice today with more words from Richard Wagamese. It is love itself that brings us all together, the human family we're a part of, the singular voice that is the accumulation of all voices raised together in praise of all creation, this one heartbeat, this one drum, this one immaculate love that put us here together so we could learn its primary teaching, that love is the energy of creation, that it takes love to create love. And I so love you, each and every one of you. And now please join me in singing, Life Calls Us On.
Friends, thank you so much for joining us this morning for this hour together, again, with your great big hearts. We so appreciate you being here. Now, we invite you to join us for Zoom Coffee Hour. This is a time where you can meet and chat with some of the other folks who've attended service today. To get to the Zoom Coffee Hour, all you have to do is to click on the link that has just appeared in the chat area of your Zoom screen. Be well, friends. Thank you for being here.